Let's not buy into the fear. Let's love, honour and support ourselves and each other. So let's start with the meditation. Let's take three deep breaths. And if you want to, you can close your eyes and get comfortable. So this is a Louise Hay meditation. Each of us have doors that are closing. And for every door that closes, new doors open. See in front of you a new door and see the light behind it. Whilst you may not know exactly what that door holds, we know that it is wonderful experiences. For we move out of the darkness of the past into the future and into the light. We love and support ourselves and each other and we know we are safe. For it is only change. We are safe. It's only change. We are willing to learn and grow. We are willing to see life in a new and different way. For we truly love and appreciate the beings that we are. We are divine, magnificent expressions of life and it is our birthright to be fulfilled in every area. And so it is. Okay guys, you can open your eyes. Hi everyone, I'm Kat Abbott and welcome to the Friendship Circle. So it is day one. Um, yeah, so uh, we're going to look at this book today okay so this series um for those of you who haven't watched the introduction this series is all about self-love friendship support and kindness during difficult times so for more information and the introduction to the series you can click the link will be here somewhere or you can check the description box below for the um, introductory video that explains all about it um, and the details. Okay. Uh, there's also loads of extra resources, books, meditations, and things that I would recommend to help you during this time. And again, you can look in the description box below. Okay. So as I said, today I will be reading from The Path to Purpose, which is my book. I'm going to read you a chapter. It is day one. It's called Storytelling. So I'm going to read the chapter first, then I'm going to go through uh, the inspirations from that chapter and then we are going to do a meditation together and then we're going to end with a prayer so um as if you uh, had uh, spoke to any of the children I used to teach I'm not the best at reading <laughs> out loud I used to be a, a primary school teacher and I think there are I have better skills let's put it that way but I'm going to do my best so here we go I have been inspired. This book is going to be a diary. So welcome to day one. I get this idea in the shower after an intense morning followed by a staring meditation. My staring meditations have become a really interesting part of my life recently. I literally just stand, sit or lie down and stare. My eyes slip out of focus and my mind feels to go blank. I have found this to be so helpful in helping my consciousness digest life and process information. It has brought forward so many interesting bits of information and joined many, many dots. Anyway, back to my day. I'm starting to panic a little, truth be told. My creative business is flagging. I've done all the things that the books about awakening and finding your purpose have suggested. 
I've thrown off the shackles of the codependent love, got my new puppy Freya, who teaches me a lot about unconditional love, and yet, here I am, a little flat and lost. I am isolated and in some ways lonely. I cannot seem to connect to others anymore. The new me doesn't really seem to know how to. It's like I'm starting from scratch. In a flash this morning, I realised that I need to delve into this. Something tells me it's spiritual, holy, and an important time that needs to be honoured, documented and respected. It's like a pilgrimage. As I realise this, I get that excited feeling in the pit of my stomach. It's so right. It's a pilgrimage. My hairs stand on end and I shiver. My tummy does a little somersault and I know this is where I need to go. Yes, it's an important journey, but I'm not exa exactly going anywhere. I realise how nuts this seems, but it also feels so very right. Okay, so how am I going to do this? I don't know. This is the point. My mind is not going to take over on this one. Back off mind, I say stubbornly to myself. All I know is that every instinct is telling me that this going nowhereness, this stillness, is important and happening for a reason. I seem to nod internally. Right, I think to myself, here we go. My best friend has gone away and this is one of the, my classic, I feel terribly alone times. But today, after my little shower revelation, I feel remarkably peaceful. I have the warm, fuzzy feeling I get when I know I'm onto something that will lead me along my path. I feel the presence of encouragement, love and joy like never before. How exciting. Interestingly, almost as soon as I really digest this joy, I become so very aware of its opposite. I'm struggling, even with my family, to feel entirely comfortable and in the flow. I really want to change this. It makes me feel sad and confused. But this is the point. My aloneness is happening on purpose. I start to imagine a life where I find my soul sisters. I have never felt so strongly about this before, to be so aware of my relationships. Perhaps better relationships will be born out of all of this. Who knows? As I slip into the day, I realise how strong and calm I am feeling. Essentially, I am alone for the next four days and it seems interesting that this inspiration has hit on the first day. The morning starts with general house tidying and sorting as I move things about and clear away the remnants of the last few days, projects and exploits. I cannot help but notice how I feel so comfortable with dealing with everyday running of the show. I'm great with this, but I find it hard to see myself as big and successful. My mind wanders towards my purpose of helping people. I know I've come to teach, but lately I cannot feel comfortable leading. It's as if I've grown in a time and environment, in relationships where my thoughts and opinions, desires and ideas are not welcomed and furthermore are ridiculed and belittled. Because of this, I understandably feel intimidated but I also feel a bit perplexed. I recognise this. I also know enough to know that the best position for Source to have placed me was one where my, pin my opinions or ways were not always wanted. What better place for me to strengthen my desire and fuel my passion? In these last few months, I have felt more than ever, Source, the great Earth Mother, Call me to her side and into her action. I didn't want to obey. I did all I could to avoid it, but against my will, out I was tweaked and placed in a two year long, well, it's actually coming up to three years, wander round my house meditation. <laughs> I was given the gift of intuitive reading and I knew it was the right, right direction. And yet here I am facing a month of not enough money, wondering what went wrong. 
As I push the vacuum around the living room and look out of the window and into the blue sky beyond, I wonder if this is a way of alerting me to something. I slip into a semi-hypnotic reverie. I don't know how long I've been daydreaming when I suddenly jump with a start. I know my self, inner self suddenly booms. I am a born storyteller. Wow, that feels profound. I'll stop there. I stop the vacuum and feel the hiss of silence. That's really something to digest. The way of the sacred storyteller. It sounds important. I cringe and then remind myself, why shouldn't I be a sacred storyteller? We all have our bit to do. No one's job is more important than another. I relax, this is who I am. Absolutely true. I tell stories and always have. Megan, my childhood and long-term best friend, and I would sit for hours while I retold the stories of my dreams and visions of our forthcoming relationships. I also reveled in writing as a child, choosing my bedroom and a pen over the fun and games outside. I get a little spring in my step as I see the way of my life and how it's dovetailed around storytelling. How wonderful. But what is putting these sacred visions and observations of my own experience and life onto the page going to do for anyone else? I doubt how useful this book will ever really be to anyone else. Nevertheless, I put the worry to one side knowing all too well the dangers of psyching oneself out. I have no idea where this book is going or what it will look like. At the minute, it's just a diary. So guys, that's day one of my diary. Like I say, I published this about four years ago. I wrote it four or five years ago. So here we go. So the inspirations from this day. So notice when your ideas come to you and be aware of any patterns. Whoa. <laughs> Slipping away there. There we go. Let's start again on that bit. Inspirations. Notice when your ideas come to you and be aware of any patterns. It's so important to listen to your soul. The flickers of something coming from the depths of you. Honour it all. Your whole life experience. Be mindful of the lessons you are learning every day just through being here in your life now. Give yourself the opportunity to digest life and process the rich information. If you feel a lack of connection to others and feel flat and lost, can you delve into it? Your life is a pilgrimage back to your original self. Feel for the excitement in the pit of your stomach. Feel for it, don't think it. The mind can't guide you here, only your instinct. Aloneness, harshness, lack of understanding all help to remind you of who and what you really are. Go inside and look for yourself to reconvene with your true essence. Where did you leave her? What does she long to do and say? So the last inspiration. It's all so much more magical than your mind wants to allow. It's all related, all woven together into a remarkable picture about to astound and astonish you. Your experiences are perfectly tailored for you. They are an offering from source. I use the word source. Some people use God, universe, whatever works for you. Okay. The totality, all that is, there are many expressions, whatever works. So I hope you enjoyed today's um, uh, extract and the inspirations. Um, feel free to take whatever you want from them. Um, yeah. So let's do the staring meditation, which is what I mentioned that I was doing at the beginning of the extract. That was what uh, brought me to this inspiration of writing this book. Okay. So in the book, it says, let's take 10 minutes, but maybe let's take five here. So all you're going to do 
is wherever you are now, whether you're sat in your chair or wherever you are, obviously, if you're driving, don't listen to a meditation while you're driving or operating heavy machinery, as they always say on meditations. Um, so if you can't, um, if you're driving at this time, don't do this part, turn it off. But um, if you're not, then let's go ahead and do the meditation. All you need to do is find a comfortable position, relax, you can lay down, sit, whatever works for you. You can be walking, it's fine. But what I need you to do is just allow your eyes to drift out of focus. You can stare out of a window into nothingness. You can choose something around you to focus on. And all we're going to do is just allow your eyes to go out of focus, go blurry. And we've got some meditation music on in the background. So we're just going to listen to that. And we're just going to allow our eyes to slip out of focus. Now, Fragments of thoughts may come up in your mind, just allow them to drift around. Okay, so don't try to stop thinking, don't try to force it away, don't try to push it out. Just allow it to float around. And you can just watch it and then, but just don't just notice the space between you and the thought. That's the way I would say is the best way to do it. So as the thought comes up, you can notice it, but don't identify with it. Just let it slip away. Okay. So allow sight, sound and thought to become fuzzy and, and hazy and just enjoy the relaxation. If you feel the need to focus on something, if you find that you need to have that, you can't just focus on nothing. <laughs> some people will find it easy to focus on the thing, some people won't. Uh, two ways I would um, uh, say it would be a good idea. One is to notice your breath. You can even count your breath in for six and out for six. Okay. Um, or... If you notice the tingling aliveness in your hands, this is Eckhart Tolle, Focus, uses this one a lot. So you can just put your hands like on your legs or whatever and just notice the tingling in your hands. Um, but obviously you're going to be staring, so, but you can still be aware of that. Okay, so we're just going to stare for five minutes. So here we go. So t just take a deep breath, relax, and let's go.
I think guys that's about five minutes maybe a little under so just take a few deep breaths feel wiggle your fingers and toes just come back to the present moment and take your time there's no rush I would really recommend a stirring meditation if you can manage five minutes that's great if you can only manage two or three minutes that's great I've done it during showering during walking you know you can do it wherever and there's no uh, right or wrong it's just uh, a, literally you just stare your eyes got to focus and this helps you to process and you may find as well that the more you do things like this the more you get uh, it's creating space for inspiration to come through and it's very very calm it's very good for your uh, physiological system um, and and just for processing during difficult times when there's a lot going on so to end today's session let's do a little prayer now it, it's not i know this sounds a bit strange to say it's not religious it's not um, we're praying to all that is if you want to i say dear universe you can substitute god source all that is um love whatever okay but it's not specifically religious so you know don't worry about that so let's pray dear universe i ask that you send love light and healing energy to all who need it at this time may they see the magnificence of their being and feel the presence of loving kindness i ask that you help me to be open to receiving love and kindness from all those who are sending love to me now please help me to remember how wonderful i truly am and to encourage me to shine my love and light into the world now and always and so it is and before we go i would just love it if we could just take a moment and send love to everybody else who's watching this video so remember you know uh, there is no time really so you will be feeling the energy now of everybody who has and will watch this video and they will feel your energy. So let's take a moment and send our love to everybody who is watching this video. And now, which some of you will find harder to do, we're gonna open our hearts and we're gonna receive that love from, so you're gonna receive my love to you and also from everybody else who has watched and will watch this video. All that love is coming to you now. So you're going to open your heart and you're going to allow that yourself to receive that love. So here we go. Guys, I love you so much. I will see you tomorrow.